Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you here this morning. I do want to um, make a, a quick announcement before we uh, open with prayer, just because this all just happened in the last couple of days, and so I didn't get a pre-recorded. As most of you know, or have you seen your email, we just had our annual conference here uh, since Thursday, Thursday through Saturday, our annual conference. And, um, of course, the last thing that happens in the annual conference is an ordination service, and the bishop fixes appointments. And um, so I will be here for another year. So, <laughs> so no, no moving around. Um, but just wanted to let you know whether that's good or bad news, it's news. <laughs> I will be here for another year. Um, I will also uh, conduct a review or a report out from what happened at annual conference. Um, I'll give you more details, but right now I'm targeting a week from Tuesday. So not this coming Tuesday, but the next one. Um, doing that, and, and it'll be available both in person and via Zoom if you can't attend in person. And uh, the Zoom I will record so that if you miss both uh, opportunities, whether in person or, or uh, via Zoom, then you can go back and watch it uh, on Zoom if you want to. Let's uh, start with a word of prayer this morning. Almighty God, we give you thanks for today. We, we uh, thank you that we can come together as brothers and sisters in Christ to worship you. And Lord, we ask that you uh, be among us, that you fill us with your spirit, that you guide our hearts and minds this morning. And, and Lord, we pray that our worship service would be a pleasing aroma to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In this week's announcements, I want to quickly let you know that we have paused our Wednesday Bible study for the summer. We will restart that in September. Some really exciting news is that we've started Children's Church for those in third grade or younger. They go to the Children's Church immediately following the children's message. And they will learn quite a lot during this Children's Church. So ensure that after you meet up with your child again following worship service to ask them what they learned and help reiterate what they learned throughout the week. Quickly, our Jason Gray and Eddie concert is coming up at the end of the month. And I wanted to let you know that if you did not want to buy a ticket to go, you can still donate towards it. So even without buying the ticket, you can go to Eventbrite and search for Jason Gray. You find the concert. There is an option to donate as opposed to buying a ticket. Now, let's greet our neighbor. If I can get you to return to your seats, we will uh, continue our worship service this morning. And this morning, uh, as we uh, get ready to prepare our hearts and minds for worship, I would ask that you uh, watch this short video, and, um, and then we will prepare to continue worship. We often hear that God loves us. We often think about God loving us. We may even fully believe that intellectually. But do we believe that deep in our hearts? 
That's a question for us to think about, a question for us to ponder, perhaps meditate on, not just today, but for maybe several weeks. There's a hymn that uh, I remember singing many years ago, and the lyrics go like this. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Beautiful lyrics, amazing lyrics, full of meaning. And in particularly focusing on God's steadfast love that never ceases and that it is new every morning. Think about that as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Our scripture reading this morning comes from Mark, chapter 3, 31 to 35. Please stand as you are able. Then his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And he replied, Who are my brother and my mother? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Please remain standing as we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. thy faithfulness O God my Father there is no shadow of turning with thee thou 
Thou changest not thy compassion, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hands hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with our nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a pace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. You may be seated. Okay. I went real fast. You're real fast? How are we doing this morning? Good. Mom said Jocelyn is setting up a new class. Yeah, awesome. new class. Yeah, going to children's church after this. Yeah, I love So I want to ask you guys a question this morning. What do you think of when someone says love? Um, that means it, it's really nice. It's really nice? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in a sentence. It's in a sentence like I love you. Yeah, you say, and, I love you. And it's very nice for God. And it's very nice for God, yeah. What about you, Marksney? What do you think about love? I say that it's better. That you love them? You like your mom and dad? Yeah, so we do. We have moms and dads that we, that we love, and then moms and dads love their kids, and we have this great love. You say you're lovely to the air? <laughs> you know what, though? But that's good, because you know who gives us the air? God gives us the air. Yeah, I was and, about to say that. Yeah, trees give you oxygen. Yeah, trees give you oxygen. And trees are in the city mm -hmm. and, and you know that God loves you no matter what? He loves you all the time. But he doesn't like when you lie. Well, he doesn't like when you lie. That's true. But we can see you. But we can, lo but we can love God, and God can love us, even if sometimes we do things God doesn't like, or we sometimes do things Mom and Dad don't that doesn't like. They still love us, and we can still love them, right? Yeah. yeah. And I love my dad. And um, we can see God. 
Can, yeah, you can't much. really see him, but you know what? You know what? We kind of sort of see God in one another because God made us like him. Yeah. Um, you know who I love? Who? God and my dad and Caitlin yeah. and Tammy. And Jimmy, and <laughs> You're naming and all, you. all the people you, you love? You. Well, we all love you too. And that's the thing. That's the great thing about being here. We can be with a group of people that all love each other and all because God loves us and we love God. I love everyone. Okay. Let's, um, let's say a word of prayer and then we'll let you go to Children's Church. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your love. We're thankful that you put your love into our hearts so that we too may love you back and we can love one another. And God, we ask that you pour out your love on these young ones and that you guide them in your love. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may remain seated for our Old Testament reading, which comes from Psalm number 138. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods I sing your praise. I bow down toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, for great is the glory of the Lord. Although the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from far away. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. As I look at this passage, this Psalm 138, some words jump out at me. A few of them are thanks, steadfast love, praise, and looking at the fact that God takes care of us in our troubles. You know, when uh, we look at this and we say, God has this steadfast love and that he takes care of us. That's what God does. But what do we do in return? Well, we thank him and we give praise. And we thank him for, for having that love for us. We thank him for uh, taking care of us. But I wonder sometimes, just like I said in the the short video earlier, do we truly understand or do we truly get God's love down deep in our hearts? Or is it only an intellectual thing? I think most of us, we probably get it intellectually and we partially get it in our hearts. Because as we live in this world and we look around in this world, we see a lot of things that are not love. And sometimes we get some, we get a little bit uh, hardened by what's going on around us. We see the arguments, the hate, the discontent, the frustration. We see all of the infighting going on, and that hardens us. But we still understand that God loves us. And the more that we think about that intellectually, and the more that we, we uh, ponder passages like Psalm 138, and we see that God's steadfast love stays with us. In this case, steadfast, though. Steadfast means it's there forever. It never changes. This is one of those things where we talk about the unchangeable God, the never-changing God. doesn't mean that he doesn't change decisions. It means his love never, never changes. His love is there forever. That's why the title of this sermon is Immutable in Love. God is immutable, immovable. He stays the same. He's the rock when it comes to love. 
I know from my own personal experience, there are times when, you know, you do something that you know God is not happy about. Sort of like little Roxon said during the children's moment. He doesn't always like what we do. And then we feel guilty. And then we feel unworthy. But then we need to remind ourselves that God still loves us. And as I said in that old hymn during the video, it's new every morning. We get to wake up every morning knowing that God loves us. And he'll continue to love us all day long. If we ever forget that, I like how this psalm ends. It says, do not forsake the work of your hands. When he's talking about the work of God's hands, who, he's talking about us. We're the work of God's hands. As I said in the children's message, um, we were made in God's image. And so being made in God's image, we're the work of his hands. And the psalmist is saying, don't forget what you've done in me. Don't forget that you made me. Don't forget to continue to love me because I am your creation. And we can do the same thing when we feel unworthy, when we feel guilty. We can go back to God and say, look, you made me. Continue to love me. Renew your love for me. Let me know. Remind me that you love me. Help me feel that love. You know, we can go back to John Wesley, regarded as the founder of Methodism. And he says that he had this strange warming of his heart. He had an experience with God where he had this strange warming of his heart. And I think that was God's love. It was certainly God's spirit working in him. But it was because of God's love that that happened. Because God cared. And God knew he had something that he was going to do through John Wesley. But he's got something that he's going to do through each one of us. You know, at our annual conference this year, the theme was a time to dance, which seems odd, but that's been our ongoing theme for the last several years. We've been going through Ecclesiastes 3 and talking about a time for this and a time for that, and this year was a time to dance. And you may say, well, that doesn't seem to make sense. Because look at what's going on in our country. We've got the political infighting back and forth across uh, party lines. We've got all kinds of disruption, mass shootings. We've got the war going on in Israel and Gaza. We've got the war going on between Russia and Ukraine. There's all kinds of skirmishes going back and forth across the countries in Africa. And we think, how in the world can you dance in a time like that? But we can dance because of God's love, because God cares for us, and God has a plan for each and every one of us. We can celebrate that love, and we can celebrate that love by extending that love to others. I'm sure most of us are thinking, you know, I'd love to change this world. If I was you know, king or queen for a day over the entire earth, I would zap all of this bad stuff and get rid of it. But you know what? We can change the world a little bit at a time by showing God's love to others. We can change the world by extending God's love, the same love that he has for us, for others. And as we do that, to one another here in this room now, but also to people we meet on the street, in the stores, in our jobs, as we extend that love, we start changing the world. You know, the world actually understands that concept. They just don't say God's love. They'll say Hey, you can make a difference in somebody's life by smiling at them today. True. But if that smile is because of God's love, the smile looks different. 
I know some of you have talked about this, and it's happened to me too, that you're out somewhere, whether it's in a store, or in my case, sometimes in an airport. And somebody comes up to you and says, hey, can you help me? Why do they come to you? Some of you are like, I have no idea why, but it's always me that they come up to in the grocery store. Right? That's happened. You're like, it's always me. Why not some of these other people? Why is when you show God's love on your face, it's a welcoming face. And people will come because they trust you. They can see there's a difference between you and the other person that's going down the same aisle that has a scowl on their face. They can see the difference in your eyes, the way they light up. They can see the difference in the smile you have because it's God's love shining through. You know, there's a story um, that happened back during the Revolutionary War. George Washington was with his troops in crossing a river. And, they need, and there was a, another man there that needed to get across the river. He saw George Washington and the troops. He didn't know who George Washington was by looking at him. He didn't know who this guy was, this great general that was soon to become president. He just knew there were a group of men, soldiers getting ready to cross the river. And he needed to get to the other side as well, but he couldn't swim. And the river was too deep for him to get across. But he saw these men on horses and thought, one of them can take me across the river. So he goes up to George Washington and asks him if he would take him across the river. And George Washington agreed. And the man jumped on the back of the horse with George Washington and they took him across. And when they got to the other side, George Washington asked him, he said, why did you come ask me? And the man said, you had yes written on your face. All of the other men had no. But that's God's love shining through. We can have yes written on our face as well if we allow God's love to shine through. But when we feel that love and we have that love and we're sharing that love, we also need to remember to give God thanks for his love and praise him for having putting that love into our hearts. That's one of the things that I will tell you. I was talking to a couple of folks earlier about annual conference. The best part of annual conference are the worship services. Nothing like having 800 plus people standing and singing together and worshiping together. And here's the, the thing. You'll see different people worshiping in different ways, expressing their thanks, their praise to God in different ways. You know, some of them are standing their hands uh, raised. Some of them will have a single hand raised. And guess what? With the theme to dance this year, there were some dancing while they were singing. But you've seen different people expressing their praise for God in different ways. And that's the thing I love about going to those annual conferences or those worship services. Legislative stuff has to be done and we get through it. But the worship services are so amazing. Being in a group like that and being in a group like this, where we feel God's love, we hear God's love, we see God's love, and then we can take that with us is an amazing thing. Because God didn't give us his love just to hold it. He gave us his love to share it. Not just with our spouse, not just with our kids, not with just our parents, but with everyone that we come in contact with. And imagine if the literally billions of Christians around the world actually shared love every single day, wherever they went, how big a difference we could all make. Think about this, and within the city of Quincy, we've got 45 churches. What if every member of every single church actually showed God's love in this city every day. What a difference we could make in this city. Showing God's love is what 
makes us the people we are and what changes the world around us, changes our community. So never forget that God loves you, but always also go to share that love with others. If you would bow with me in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your amazing love. We thank you for putting your love into our hearts. And God, we, we praise you, we sing praises to you for your love for us. Be with us and help us and show us how to share your love with everyone we come in contact with. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, now it's our turn. <laughs> Please stand as you're able as we sing Love Divine, All Love's Excelling. And if you feel like dancing, I guess you can dance too. Let us be, let us see thy great salvation perfectly restore in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place, till we cast our crowns before thee. Lost in wonder, love in praise. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. 
And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
We now have a time within our worship service to continue our worship and to give back a portion which God has blessed us. And this truly is worship. As you may remember, God had commanded his people in the Old Testament to continue to give. And Paul invited the churches across the various places where he went to continue to give to help those in Jerusalem who were going through a famine. And so this is our opportunity to give back, to give to the ministries of the church and to help us to reach out into our communities. I would also offer that those who are watching online, you have an opportunity to give online through our website. And I pray that we all give with cheerful hearts and that we give as the Holy Spirit leads us. Almighty God, we give you thanks for your rich blessings, the many blessings that you pour out on us each and every day. And we ask that you pour out your blessing on this offering and on each one of us again today. May each of us and this offering be used to expand your kingdom here on this earth, to spread the word of the good news of your son, Jesus Christ, and to bring people into your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please remain standing as we conclude our final hymn.
Open my eyes that I may see glimpses of truth thou hast for me. Place in my hand the wonderful key that shall unclasp and set me free. Silently now I wait for thee, ready, my God, thy will to see. Open my eyes, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my ears that I may hear Voices of truth thou sendest clear And while the wave notes fall on my ear Everything false will disappear Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my ears, illumine me, Spirit divine. Open my mouth and let me bear gladly the warm truth everywhere. Open my heart and let me prepare Love with our children thus to share Silently now I wait for thee Ready, my God, thy will to see Open my heart, illumine me Spirit divine. You may be seated. Just a quick reminder before we pray, we do have these prayer cards in the various uh, places in the pews. And so if you have prayers that you would like to, uh, people you'd like to be lifted up in prayer, make sure you put those in the collection plates and we will certainly put them on our prayer list. Um, you also actually have an option to check a box that says, do not share with others, so you can keep it private between you and I. Let us bow in prayer. Almighty God, we do come to you in prayer, and, and we give you thanks first and foremost for who you are, and we praise you for who you are. And we bring requests before you, and many of them are in our own hearts and in our own minds, and we lift each one of those people up as well. But we specifically lift up today Wayne and Eileen and Norma. And God, we also lift up uh, Judy and James. And we lift up David. And we lift up Tanya and Christopher. And we lift, lift up uh, so many of our others that, that, again, we have in our own hearts and minds that are in need of your healing power, your strengthening, your courage, the, the love and joy that you have they, they need that in their, in their lives. And God, we ask that you be with each and every one of them that we name individually. And God, we also ask that you would be with our leadership across our nation, be with our people of our nation. And God, be with each one of us. Help us to continue to spread your love to those that we encounter. It's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our New Testament reading comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 13 and chapter 5, verse 1. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. 
For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. As you go this week, may God continue to shed his love on each and every one of you, and may each and every one of you continue to share that love with those that you meet. Amen. And go in peace.